In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make this simple holographic fish composite. I'm also only going to give myself 20 minutes to complete it. So if you've got Photoshop and you're feeling up for a challenge, head down into the description where I've provided links for all the stock assets needed for this video. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video to find out about my new Photoshop course, Neon Butterflies. Okay, it's time to fire up Photoshop and let's run it. Just a quick side note before we begin, like a Muppet, I've gone and cropped the top bar menu out of the video, but don't worry, I'll provide on-screen instructions when necessary so you can still easily follow along. So first things first, we want to set up a new document. And for this piece, we'll set the width to 2,880 pixels wide, 3,500 pixels for the height, resolution 300, RGB color, 8 bits, and white for the background color. And for our first stock image, we're going to grab the one with the character and simply drag and drop into the document. If needed, press Command T to activate the transform tool, and then we'll right click and choose flip horizontal and hit enter. Okay, nice. So now the first thing we want to do is blur this background section a little more since we'll be adding elements in front of it and we don't want it to steal too much focus. Let's right click on the character layer and select duplicate layer. Hit OK. We'll then right click on this layer and choose rasterize layer since we're going to add a destructive filter which won't work on a smart object. From the top bar menu, click filter, come down to blur and choose lens blur. And simply copy the same settings I have here and once you've done that you can hit OK. We'll then create a new layer mask by clicking the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. The mask thumbnail should automatically be selected. Make sure your foreground color is set to black, we're then going to select the brush tool and choose one of Adobe's default soft round brushes. And we're going to simply paint over where we want to hide the effects of the blurred layer, which in this case is the character. Awesome, next with the same layer selected, we're going to create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we'll click this icon to create a clipping mask so it only affects the layer directly below this one. And we're just going to decrease the saturation, removing the color so again it won't steal too much focus. Around about here at minus 55 will do fine. Now we're going to create another adjustment layer and this time we're going to choose brightness and contrast. Click OK. Create a new clipping mask and we'll decrease the brightness around about here and introduce just a bit more contrast. Cool. Make sure the mask thumbnail for this new brightness and contrast adjustment layer is selected. Grab the brush tool, make sure black is the foreground color. And we're just going to remove a little bit of the effect around the character. Okay, making good progress, let's make some overall lighting and color changes to these layers. For our next adjustment layer, we're going to choose Levels. And you can copy the number values that I end up with. 15 for the first one. 218 for this one. Let's make some overall color changes. So for our next adjustment layer, we're going to choose selective color. And from the colors drop down menu, we're going to choose neutrals. And I'll make some small adjustments until I'm happy. And then you can pause the video and copy what I end up with. Cool, gonna leave that there. That just about does it for the background and character elements, but I think there's just one more thing we can do to make it a bit more interesting. We're gonna go back to our stock images, find the one with the bokeh lights, and then drag and drop into the document. 
If needed, press Command T to activate the transform tool and then we'll right click on the image and choose rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Right click again and then come down and select flip horizontal and press enter. We're just going to use a small part of this image so the first thing we're going to do is make a selection. Select the rectangular marquee tool from the toolbar and we'll make a selection over this area here. Press Command C to copy and press Command Shift V to paste in the exact same place it was copied from. Then right click on the original layer and delete layer and that will leave us with just this small selection to work with. Make sure that layer is selected and then we'll change the layer blending mode to screen. And then we'll zoom out a little, press Command T to activate the transform tool and I'll grab a corner handle holding Shift option so it scales proportionally from its center, move it off to the right and add a little bit of rotation. We're aiming for somewhere around about here, I think that looks decent. We'll just make a few edits to this and clean it up a little. With this Bokeh Lights layer selected, we're going to create a new mask. Select the brush tool from the toolbar. Make sure black is set as our foreground color. And we're just going to brush over where we want to remove the edges. The colors of these don't look great, so let's quickly change those. We're going to create a new adjustment layer choosing Selective Color. From the Color drop-down menu, select Neutrals. And first, I'll introduce some Cyan. Oh, let's also create a clipping mask before we forget. We want this adjustment layer to only affect the Bokeh Lights layer. We'll increase this one to 100% and we'll decrease the yellow to minus 100%. That's looking better, but I think the blue is just a bit too strong on the lights on the far right. Select the brush tool, make sure black is the foreground color, and this thumbnail mask is selected, and we're just going to remove some of the blue from the edge here. Yeah, I've removed a bit too much there, so I'll press Command Z to undo and then have another go. Cool, okay, I'm happy with that. All right, making good progress. That'll do it for the background and character layer. Let's open up our stock images again, find the one with the fish, and then drag and drop into the document. And time to put Photoshop's AI to the test. Grab the magic wand tool, click select subject, and drum roll. Ooh, nice, not bad at all. Just a few tweaks to make. Set your tolerance to about 20, and we'll zoom in. And holding option, I'm just going to click where we want to remove some of the selection because it's selected a bit too much. Alright, that'll do. Let's hit Command C to copy the selection, and then Command Shift V to paste in place. And we can right click on the original fish layer and delete it. Select the new copied layer, and then we'll click on Select from the top bar menu and choose Color Range. From the Select drop down menu, choose Highlights so we can isolate the highlights. Set the fuzziness to 100% and the range to 255 and then hit OK. We've now got the highlights in the image selected and we can press Command C to copy and Command Shift V to paste in place. Right click on the layer below and delete it. And again select this semi-transparent fish layer that we've just created. This is a great technique to start off holographic effects by isolating the highlights so that we can manipulate the individual pixels to achieve a wider range of effects. Next, press Command T to activate the transform tool and let's get this fish into position. I'm going to right click on the image and flip horizontal, move it off to the right and grab a corner handle and scale it down. And we want it to appear at least partially in her eye line, so we're going to position it just about here. Once happy with the position of yours, you can hit enter. Then we'll change the layer blending mode for this layer selecting screen and double click on the fish layer to open up the layer styles window and first we'll check the inner glow box then copy all the values that I have set here copy the hex color code as well and once you've copied all that we're then going to select outer glow and again just copy the same settings 
is the color hex code. Once you've done that, we'll hit OK. All right, cool. That's created some nice subtle glow effects for the fish. Let's adjust those colors some more. Create a new adjustment layer, selecting hue and saturation. Click OK. We'll create a clipping mask. And we want the fish to appear more pink, so we're going to adjust the hue slider to about minus 29. Right, we've got a decent base for the fish in place now. It's time to start adding a few effects, give it that digital holographic look. Let's open up our stock images folder, and we're looking for the image of smoke. I'm using an image from Envato Elements for this one, but if you don't have Envato Elements, I've provided a free alternative in the description, and the steps I provide will work just fine for either image. Press Command T to activate the transform tool, right click on the image, and then come down and click Flip Vertical. I'll then move the cursor outside the image and rotate it about 90 degrees counterclockwise. Next, with the smoke layer selected, we're going to change the layer blending mode to Color Dodge and press Command T to activate the transform tool. We'll scale it down slightly and we'll move it over. And the idea is to create some smoky tendrils flowing off the back of the fish. We'll rotate and resize as needed until we find a nice spot. Ideally, the smoke will follow the natural lines of the fish like here and here. All right, I think that'll do. We've got the lines flowing nicely. Let's make some adjustments to the color of this smoke. We're going to create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. Keeping an eye on the smoke, we're going to move the hue slider to around about here. Increase the saturation to about 70. And we'll decrease the lightness to about minus 35. And of course, we just want this adjustment layer to apply to the smoke layer, so we'll create a clipping mask. Next, select the smoke layer. Come down and create a new mask. Grab the brush tool. Make sure black is the foreground color. And with a soft round brush, we're just going to mask away some of the smoke layer. I like the smoke effect down here, but I think we'll use a separate image for this, one that's going to work better with the composition. So let's grab that other image now. Make sure the top layer in our layers panel is selected. Open up your stock images, and we're going to grab this other smoky looking image. Hit enter. And first we're just going to simply change the layer blending mode to color dodge. With the Move tool selected, we're going to move this layer like we did with the first smoke layer, just looking for a nice spot where the lines are going to connect up and flow naturally. I'm going to press Command T and add a little bit of rotation to mine, just making small adjustments until it feels right. Somewhere about here looks good. I'm going to hit Enter. Now we can just clean it up, remove any parts we don't want. Let's create a new layer mask. And with the layer mask thumbnail selected, we'll grab the brush tool, set the foreground color to black, and just mask away any sections we don't want. All right, it's looking okay, but not very holographic. So let's address that next. Let's navigate to our stock images folder, and we'll grab the image with the half tone effect. Drag and drop into the document and hit enter. Press Command T to activate the transform tool. Right click and choose flip vertical. Just going to zoom out, grab a corner handle and scale it down holding shift option to scale it proportionally from its center. Move it over on top of the fish, make it a bit smaller. Somewhere about here will do fine so hit enter. And we'll change the layer blending mode to color dodge. And with the move tool, we're going to adjust the position a little bit more, just focusing on how these lights interact with the fish and where it looks best. Once you're happy, we're going to create a new adjustment layer. 
select hue and saturation, create a new clipping mask, check the colorize box, and we'll set the hue to about 319, increase the saturation to 75, and we'll leave the lightness where it is. And we'll create another adjustment layer, this time choose brightness and contrast, create a clipping mask, and we'll decrease the brightness all the way down so the effect becomes a bit more subtle. Let's make sure the layer is selected again, and one more adjustment to the position, making sure we're happy. Once you're good with the position, we're going to create a new layer mask. Then we'll select the brush tool, set the foreground color as black, and with a soft round brush, let's zoom in and we'll remove the effect where we don't want it. We mostly just want it to appear inside the fish, but a tiny bit of overlap is okay. Okay, and just gonna zoom out, see how that's looking. Yeah, that's not too bad. Just gonna remove a little bit more here. Lovely jubbly. I think we can reuse this effect elsewhere, so let's do that now. Make sure the same layer is selected, hold shift and then click on the top layer. Then right click on one of the layers and choose duplicate layers to create a copy of all three layers. Then make sure the mask thumbnail of the copied layer is selected. Make sure white is set as the background color. Then press command delete to fill the mask with white, revealing all the pixels. Then with the move tool selected, we're gonna move this layer down and we're gonna position it somewhere around here. Make sure the mask thumbnail is selected again. Select the brush tool and set black as the foreground color and brush and hide the effect where we don't want it. Okay, cool, making progress, but I think we can definitely keep ramping up the digital effects. Let's introduce some more of that now. Make sure the top layer in our layers panel is selected. Navigate to your stock images, and we're gonna find the image with the glitchy looking lines and we're gonna drag and drop into the document and hit enter. And the first thing we'll do to this image is to change the layer blending mode to color dodge. Just gonna move it up. Press Command T to activate the transform tool. And once again, just looking for that nice position. Kind of an interesting image this one, creates almost like a plasma effect. Hit enter once you're happy with your position. And let's make some color changes. We'll create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask. and we're trying to match the pink in the rest of the image. Select the glitchy lines layer again, and then we'll create a new layer mask. Select the brush tool, set the foreground color to black, and we'll just start masking away any sections that feel a little bit out of place. Cool, getting close now. If you've been smashing this in one session, don't forget to save your work, but uh, let's move on to the next part. Let's make sure the topmost layer in our layers panel is selected. Navigate to your stock images, and we're gonna grab our last image with the LED effect and drag and drop into the document, and hit enter. And before we do anything else with this image, we're gonna add a couple of adjustment layers, starting with hue and saturation, Create a clipping mask. Check the colorize box. And we're gonna move the hue slider to find a purple. And increase the saturation. The next adjustment layer will be choosing brightness and contrast. Create a clipping mask and I'm gonna decrease the brightness and increase the contrast. 
Then make sure the LED lights layer is selected. Then change the layer blending mode to color dodge. And with the move tool, we're just gonna move this over our fish until we find a spot that looks nice. This should help create that holographic projection feel. And feel free to experiment, put it wherever you think it works best. It's looking pretty good in a few different areas to be honest, so this is, uh, this is gonna be tricky to decide. I think I'm gonna go around about here for mine. Once you're happy, we're gonna create a new layer mask for that layer. Select the brush tool, set the foreground color to black, and clean up any unwanted parts. Nice, I think we've got time for just one more thing, trying to keep this edit to about 20 minutes. So lastly, select the topmost layer in the layers panel, and we want to create a new solid color fill layer. Copy the color hex code that I use. Once you've done that, hit OK. Select the mask thumbnail. Make sure black is the background color and press command delete to fill the mask with black and hide the pixels. Next, change the layer blending mode to linear dodge. Select the brush tool and with white as the foreground color, choose quite a large soft round brush. With the fish in the center, click once to create a nice glow. And there we go, we've got ourselves a simple but nice looking composite with some eye-catching elements which only took 20 minutes at a slow pace. And of course, you don't need to stop there, I spent another 20 minutes on mine and ended up with this. So experiment with the different techniques and see where it takes you. If you found this short tutorial helpful, you've got to check out my newest Photoshop course, Neon Butterflies, where you'll learn even more cool stuff. Not only that, but I'll also share my go-to special moves, which are sure to elevate your artworks to the next level. Discover some of the same techniques I use in my other artworks, from where to find inspiration and mock up your ideas, to easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a detailed and striking photo composite from start to finish. And as always, I really appreciate the feedback and the comments on the courses so far. It's been great to see your results. And that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.